Melee Hunter is currently one of the strongest and one of the most fun specializations out in Season of Discovery Phase 2. So here's a quick guide for everything you need to know if you want to play the class yourself. The whole reason why melee hunters are actually viable right now are because of the two new runes. Melee Specialist, which reduces the cooldown of Raptor Strike to three seconds, and it also gives you a 30% chance on Raptor Strike to not trigger a cooldown at all. So if you get lucky, then you can just keep spamming this. On top of that, it makes this an instant cast ability instead of attacking on your next weapon swing. And when you combine this with Dual Wield Specialization, which includes increases the damage of your offhand by 50% and causes your Raptor Strike to hit with both of your weapons. So your main damage dealing ability is hitting with both your main hand and offhand and Raptor Strike is getting an extra 30% increased damage when you are wielding two weapons of the same type. So you will always be using either two swords or two fist weapons. Then this is the reason why Raptor Strike is hitting so incredibly hard. Also, it's important to note that dual wield specialization calculations are actually being applied after every other damage modifier, so that's actually kind of why it's so big. First of all, as a melee hunter, there are three separate specializations that can be extremely viable, although the third one I will get into is most likely going to be the strongest one, and it actually sims as the strongest damage. The first is to be a deep beast mastery hunter. You're basically just a BM hunter, but you are actually using melee attacks. And technically, you don't need five out of five frenzy if you want to keep up the frenzy buff, the attack haste on your pet. But running five out of five frenzy just makes it so that your pet can probably get a crit earlier on and get that frenzy buff on them earlier. You can also run the hybrid build where you are mostly in the BM tree but going down into the survival tree to grab savage strikes. This increases your crit chance on raptor strike by 20%. This is huge because your raptor strike is hitting twice each time you are using the ability, hitting with the main hand and offhand respectively, so 20% crit is just actually massive on your main ability. And this spec slightly outperforms the Deep Beast Mastery build. So if you want to, you can run this specialization, but the highest DPS output build would be to go Survival. And there's multiple iterations you can do within the Survival tree. You don't need to grab Deflection. You could put more points into Entrapment. You could also increase your HP with Survivalist, and you could want to get Counterattack if that is what you actually want to go for. But the things you are very much looking out for are the 20% increased crit chance from Savage Strikes, the increase to your hit chance from sure footed that is three percent hit for you reducing your chance to have feign death resist is actually kind of very very helpful because you will want to drop threat then you will get three percent crit chance from killer instinct 15 percent extra agility which is massive from lightning reflexes and if you want you can grab wyvern sting you don't need to grab this it is not absolutely essential for the spec and you most likely won't be able to use it in pve for dps but it could be a nice gap closer if you are doing PvP. You're just swapping out your chest rune and glove rune for Lone Wolf and Carve. This will be the highest DPS build that you can run right now this phase in pre bis gear and in bis gear, but if you are the only hunter in your group, then you will still want to go with Heart of the Lion and Beast Mastery runes, even if you are survival spec. This means you're still using a pet if you are a survival hunter, and it will still be more DPS than any of the other builds. Now, as for the pet you will want to use, it is going to be a 2.0 attack speed cat. And that is because we will often be using flanking strike, which hits with your pet's attack damage, which also scales with their attack speed. If they have slower attack speed, they hit harder. Pets abilities do not scale with their attack speed. So claw and bite, which you will need to get at rank six, do not scale with the pet attack speed at all. But if you want to get the best in slot abilities for your pet, there are are four total you can get. Prowl and Dash are kind of interchangeable if you already have Growl trained on your pet. Prowl will let your cat go invisible and their first attack will hit for 35% more and Dash will allow your pet to connect to bosses and enemies faster. You can get both of these abilities right now by taming a Ridge Stalker Patriarch down here in the Badlands. Now we need to get Claw and Bite rank 6, which both can be attained in Swamp of Sorrows. Bite comes from the Death Strike 
tarantulas that you can find down here on the map. And claw comes from the silt crawlers, the crabs that you will find along the coast, just on the top and bottom of the coast right here. And bite will usually take a lot longer than claw for you to learn how to teach it to your other pets. Now, because of the high armor from the bosses in Nomergan, theoretically, a wind serpent could be your best pet, but wind serpents only have rank three of lightning breath. You literally cannot learn rank four right now. So it's just as strong as it was in BFD and phase one. Also, you can learn a higher rank of scorpid poison, which will get actually a 20% damage increase from either a balanced druid or a shaman if you have those in your group. But that 20% damage increase to poisons also does get reduced because there's a 20% inherent damage reduction to poisons and bleeds on the mechanical bosses in Nomergan. Theoretically, though, on a long fight, poisons might be bis because as a beast mastery hunter, you can actually use Bestial Wrath, your major CD, and it will snapshot the poisons, making them do 50% more damage. This could stack up huge, so might as well try it. Melee hunter rotation is very spammy, but also incredibly fun because you actually have something to press on every single GCD. And because of procs resetting some of your abilities, we follow more of a priority system than we do a standard rotation. That is going to be to use flanking strike first to get the buff that increases the damage of your raptor strikes and mongoose bite by 10%. This can stack up to three times and ideally you keep this stacked up at three times as often as possible. Then we will use raptor strike. This hits with both your main and offhand weapon for a ton of damage. It might even be over tuned right now so expect blizzard to be looking into it. These are your two primary abilities doing most of your damage. Each time raptor strike is off CD and you aren't worried about losing the flanking strike buff you will cast raptor strike. If you are stacking more flanking strike buffs then you will actually prioritize that first and then use the raptor strike hoping that the raptor strike will instantly reset the cooldown of flanking strike. It is a 30 second CD so the only way to keep the buff up and to stack the buff is to get lucky with RNG. Raptor strike has a 20% chance of resetting the CD of flanking strike. Now if you can't press flanking strike or raptor strike you will want to use carve if you do not have a pet. Carve will be your main filler here if you don't have a pet, but if you are running the Heart of the Lion build, then you will be filling with Wing Clip. That is because Wing Clip does a little bit of extra damage, but mainly because it can proc Wind Fury for you. And because bosses aren't the same as they were in BFD, you actually can feign death and drop traps, quite often. So if you get the chance in your rotation, instead of a wing clip or a carve as filler, then you can actually feign death and drop a trap. Although I would suggest actually feigning death to reduce your threat because melee hunters have ridiculous threat right now. And remember, if you do have a pet out, always use aspect of the hawk because pets do actually scale with your ranged attack power. It will increase the damage of your pet to be in aspect of the hawk. Don't use aspect of the monkey. Okay, now that we know all of that, let's look at a little bit of quick gear gearing for the phase. This is going to be a brief gearing guide for the phase, looking at some pre for the phase. One item you already have is the Artemis Cowl. You probably should have your PvP necklace, and you can just use the PvP rings, just both of them. They're very simple to get. The Flailed Flying Experiment is from the quest down in Feralis, where you get the Distress Beacon from any of the drops in the zone, and then you go and defend the chicken on the little escort. The Dark Hooded Cape is pretty hard to get, so I would actually suggest getting the blood drenched drape. This is just from PVP in Stranglethorn Vale. Blazewind Breastplate is from the Badlands, but you will have to do a prequest first before you can get it. The PVP bracers are just amazing, but they're actually slightly worse than the bracers from the raid. So I, if you're not exalted already with Warzone Gulch, it's not even worth it. Just grab something like from the auction house until you get one of the raid items. Then as for weapons, you'll get the Vanquisher's sword and the PVP sword from Revered from Warzone Gulch. If you're not there already, just go to Ashenvale. People are doing that now. For your offhand, you have the Bloodlash Bow from the new STB event because this procs from the normal attacks. Then we will have the Bloodforge Greaves. These are actually like your Biss, but they're going to be super expensive. They're very expensive from the auction house and they're super hard to farm. It's very RNG. Gauntlets of Divinity are amazing, but if you have the cooldown of your Void Touch Leather Gloves, I would use those. Also, I really like the hit rating. Hit rating is something that we are a little bit struggling with. Now, here's a quick snapshot of basically a full Biss situation, although you can technically 
switch out the belt for another belt and you can also switch out bonk meisters if you need to bonk meisters are phenomenal but you can also use some of the other gloves available in the raid now what you want to focus on is getting your fist weapons as fast as possible you need double fist weapon before you can swap the gear and you will be using the male gear the male gear is actually doing slightly more damage than using any of the leather gear setups that is going to be the chest piece and the leggings so good luck getting those and as for weak wars and macros those are pinned in my twitch chat if you just go in there and use the command for them but as for macros the most important one i can suggest for you guys is always making sure start attack is on your abilities if you're any melee class you know that you need start attack on your abilities also if you are doing cleave or during trash i would suggest grabbing carve during trash it is very useful or you could use explosive shot weaving just for extra damage lastly you can make trap macros so your pet doesn't keep you in combat if you're trying to use Thane death to trap but you cannot macro raptor strike and flanking strike together and from there have fun guys enjoy playing a brand new spec that we have never seen in world of warcraft classic the melee hunter is phenomenal and it's performing really well again slightly might be a little bit too strong so we will see what happens next week as other classes get buffed enjoy the raid good luck getting loot and of course if you like this video or want to stay up to date with more season of discovery content make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel it means a lot to me and i will see you guys all on the next one as well as i'll keep you updated if the class changes at all